I want to welcome everybody to Yeshua Sabbath Church. Today's Torah portion is called Bamidbar. And uh, this is, a, I think, a very interesting Torah portion. Uh, think about what's been going on in our teachings the last month or so. Now it's called In the Wilderness. In the Wilderness. So, uh, in this Torah portion, it's going to say they counted, made a count of how many men left Egypt. There were 600,000 men. And then there were women and there were children. So we're talking about 2, 3 million people here. Okay. Y'all hear that? We're talking about 2 to 3 million people. And, uh, and they're going to the promised land. Think about that. They're going to the promised land. Some of them are wheat seed. Some of them are tares seed. And that's what we're going to get into the definition of here in this, in the wilderness, Torah portion. Because for the last month or two, God's been telling us how to cross over and be close to God and not die in the wilderness. Not die. Okay, so how many of this two to three million people were tares were tares. Uh, the first generation, uh, above the age 20, when they left Egypt, they were all tares. Why? Because uh, their traditions and their uh, things they were used to, the way they did things, had so much effect on them, they, did, they could not see what God was wanting them to do. Okay? Even though he took them to Sinai, gave them the law, they just rejected it and didn't want to do what God said. How many of this first generation actually got to go to the promised land? Two, Joshua and Caleb. They were wheat seed. They did exactly what God said to do. The first generation uh, who were accountable above the age of 20 all died in the wilderness. So here we are. In the second exodus, at the end of days, last days. And so my question is, are you tares? We're about to go to the promised land. Are you going to be like Joshua and Caleb and do exactly what God's been telling us to do the past month or so? Or are you going to say, well, this is the way I do church. This is how I obey God. How I've been doing it for years are you going to be tares? Or are you going to do exactly what God says to do? So, and we'll get into details what God says in his word here. And it's not, it's not me saying this. It's um, the, the word words saying it. So we get into the definition of tares, Darnell, and some other things. It's going to be really good, okay? So, the midbar in the wilderness. So that's what we face right now. Real soon, I say within 10 years. I have a few quick announcements. That's uh, out on Highway 111, the hand of God over America. The Aleph and the Tav, as uh, told by the three eclipses that just happened. One in 2017, one in 23, and then one in 24. It is good to believe in a rescue. I was listening to Bill Schultz teaching this past week. It was it's called the Rapture for New Believers, New Christians, and uh, I agreed with most everything he said. But he was saying this: It's good to believe in a rescue. Read First Thessalonians one ten. Okay, Paul says Yeshua says he will save you. He will rescue you. That's what Paul says. That's a fact. Now, here's the nitty-gritty. Amos 9.10, read that. Do not tell anyone that you will get raptured because you believe. So many in the church have told so many people, like the, the movies, the books, the Left Behind series, hey, God's coming to rapture the church. You better believe it. Amos 9.10 says, do not say that. It says, the Bible says, 
pray that you are worthy to escape it. That's all it says. I went through Revelation looking for people in Revelation that go to heaven. You know, if you die, if you're martyred, you go to heaven. But as far as rapture, that's people alive suddenly in heaven. There's only one verse. It's Revelation 14, 1 to 4. I'm going to read it to you. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood standing, resurrected Yeshua, standing on Mount Zion. And with him standing are 144,000. They're not dead in the grave. They're standing. They sing a new song before the throne, before the four beasts and the elders. No man could learn that song but the 144,000, which were redeemed from the earth, taken from the earth, redeemed. There are 8 billion people. Divide 8 billion into 144,000. What are the odds that you're going to get raptured? The Left Behind series set in the books tend to think thousands, millions might be raptured. If it's only 100, I'm saying if it's only 144,000, because that's the only verse I could find, your odds of being raptured are 0.00002%. So that, how do I pray? I believe in the rapture, the rescue. I know he'll rescue me. But he expects me to be doing what he did. And if, he says, if you love me, you'll obey my commandments. And most, most of the Christian world does not obey Yeshua, does not keep the Sabbath like he did, does not keep the feast days like he does, he does, and does not eat kosher like he did. They're doing their own thing. So we're talking about, are you wheat? Are you tares? Are you going to die in the wilderness? Or are you going to be able to cross over into the kingdom age? God's calendar. Did anybody see? Did anybody see the new moon? Raise your hand if you've seen the new moon. Today's day two, so it's only been up there two days. Did you see the new moon? I'm telling you, it's so special to see the renewed moon. It represents Yeshua. And it's so exciting for me to see it. It was so plain last night and the night before. It was absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. What are new Christians to do? Explained very thoroughly right there at Jerusalem Council. Apostle Paul on trial for it's a life and death type of trial. Either they either kill him. Or he gets to live. And he quotes, read Acts 24, 14. This is what Paul says, I do. He does, did not teach the laws done away. No, he did not. The Midbar in the wilderness. So earlier, was talking about wheat and tares. Um. Uh, Two to three million people left Egypt. God took them to Mount Sinai, gave them the law. And then in this next, either in this Torah portion or real soon, they're going to do a golden calf and not listen to everything the Lord says. So, um, and do everything the Lord says based on tradition or whatever. So the first generation die in the wilderness. So they didn't do what God said except two people, Joshua and Caleb. They did exactly what God said. And I titled the message, Are You Tares? Or are you like Joshua and Caleb? They got to cross over. Everybody under the age of 20 got to cross over except for a little event at Baal Peor right before they were to cross over when they stopped eating the manna and they ate the food of the, uh, I forget the people that lived in Baal Peor. They ate their food and served their gods, and so they died. They didn't get to cross over. That was the second generation of people, okay? From the first generation, Joshua and Caleb get to cross over. They did exactly. 
So on page one, I'm going to talk about Pentecost just a little bit. It's coming up, right? We're, doing, we're making a daily oath that on the 50th day from the wave offering during Passover, 50 days later, it's Pentecost, and it's a special thing. It's a special high holy day. So Leviticus 23 says, Count seven full weeks from the day you brought the barley sheath during unleavened bread. Count 50 days. The day after the seventh Sabbath, the seventh Shabbat is a Shabbat. The eighth uh, is the eighth Shabbat. It means something new. Number eight means something new. So we expect that on Pentecost, we're going to see something brand new from God. Okay, two things in the past in our Bible was something new. One was the Torah given Mount Sinai when God came down from heaven and spoke. That's pretty rare. Then in Acts 2, we have the Holy Spirit given to believers. That was a pretty significant thing, something new. So, as I read here, it says that the sages say that the Israelites were told by Yahweh that he would give them 50 days from the Exodus and give them his law. They were so eager to hear God's rules for living that they were told to count the days, 50 days. And what you do, you don't count down to 50, you count up to the 50th day. That's a little different from regular counting. So during these 50 days, you, ha you have all the resurrected Yeshua's appearances to God's people. He died during the 50 days. He left. He was he ascended to heaven on the 40th day. He says, Terry, 10 more days because you're going to receive the Comforter, the, the Holy Spirit. So it's during the counting of the Omer that Yeshua has all his interaction with God's people during these 40 days. What we're going through right now, okay? And they're to count up and uh, for a mighty event to happen on Pentecost. So in the past, it was the law. In the past, it was the, the Holy Spirit. What about the future on Pentecost? I say... Is it possibly he's coming for his bride on Pentecost? I think he is. Pentecost is a jubilee of days, the captive set free. And I say Pentecost 2030, that's when all of God's people are set free, Satan locked up. The sages teach that Pentecost is culmination of the Passover. So Passover lasts from Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, 50 days. All this time is, in a way, Passover culminates on the day of Pentecost. At Pentecost, what happens? Bring two loaves of bread. It's the first fruits offering at Pentecost. It's bread that rises, has sin in it, or leaven, but they are repentant of the, repented of their sin. They're like Yeshua. So they become a first fruits offering just like Yeshua. Yeshua was without sin, and he was raised from the dead. He's the first fruits of barley. But at Pentecost, it's the wheat harvest. Bring two loaves of bread, make two loaves of bread. So that's the significance of these two loaves. Repented of their sin, and they do uh, follow God like Yeshua did, and they're raised at I say Pentecost. And historically, Pentecost is when the Jews would recommit every year to the law of Moses. Okay, so in Yeshua's day, uh, in Acts 2, they've been praying all night. They're expecting something huge to happen. The 50th day. They're expecting something. So they're praying all night for the supernatural. So what I've been trying to encourage us to do 
is during these 50 days, counting up to the day of Pentecost, expect the supernatural, right? That's what they were doing. And they received it. The Holy Spirit, our comforter, our helper, our friend. Are we counting, are we making a daily oath, counting up to the 50th day? Are we doing that? It is a command to do that. Today's uh, Torah scriptures is Numbers 1 to 4, Hosea, 1 Corinthians. We'll go to page 2. Okay, Numbers 1, 1 to 2. Here we go in Numbers. We've been in Leviticus, receiving the law. Now, Numbers 1. Yahweh told Moses to count or number the Israelites age 20 and up. So what's the age of accountability? 20 years old. So if you're 20 years old, God expects you to do what's right with him and follow him and do what he says. Or you could fall into judgment. That's just the way it is. Rashi says that each individual is special, unique, has a place and a purpose in the kingdom called Israel. So kingdom's coming. It's going to reign for a thousand years. And every one of us that are able to cross over have a unique place and purpose in that kingdom. Okay? We don't know what it is, but we do have a special place in it. Verse 46 they counted the men, and there were 603,550 men. Then with women and children, probably two, three million, okay? This is the generation uh, in this first exodus. They represented the seeds. We're counting these uh, bar barley wreaths here. They have seeds. That's seeds for the kingdom age. And they're counting these seeds, the, po the people that populate the promised land. Because there's a verse that says, you'll be like the sands of the sea. You'll populate the, the Messianic age, the world. So, page three, have you counted yourself as a seed for the kingdom? And I say, by doing what Yeshua did, keeping the Sabbath, the feast days, Shabbat, uh, note about the tares. So you got Yeshua is a wheat wheat seed, the good seed. Now the tares. What's the tares? The tares grows with and looks like the wheat. In this church, we got all wheat out here. Okay, wheat seed. But if there were tares in here, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference by looking around. They would all look like just like us. You know. Oh, I'm keeping the Torah. Oh, I'm doing this. I'm doing that. When they're not. When they're not doing it. You cannot distinguish between the wheat and the tares. You, you cannot. They both pray to God. They both are religious instead of being what I would call pagan or agnostic or an atheist. People who don't believe in God at all. They both claim the promises of Abraham. Remember, the tares do not, do not look like the world. They do not. They look like your average Sunday-going uh, people. Oh, I love God. I know God. I'm going to get raptured. But due to the lack of some teachings from our Bible, they're a little confused about a few issues. But we love them. You know, they're friends, they're family. The tares looks like the wheat. Read Matthew 13. The good seed are the children of the 1,000-year kingdom age. They are protected. What happens to the tares? There's a verse that says separate, where God separates the tares from the wheat. The tares are burned. And I'll talk more about that when I get to the Brit Hadashah. Numbers 1, 50 to 53. The Levites, the priests, and we're to be, we're priests, dude. We're called to be priests. Not like they were, but our role's a little different, but we're considered priests. What did the priests do in the past? 
They were always in the sanctuary, God's temple. They protected God's word, the Ark of the Covenant, his Ten Commandments. So it was all about what God said to do, and they were there to make sure that happened, that nothing interfered with God's Torah. Verse 9 to 12, the Levites were chosen instead of the firstborn of all Israel to guard the sacrifice. So all of Israel was to be a priesthood, but because they did a golden calf, God said, okay, the Levites did not participate in this golden calf thing, so I'll make them the priests because he couldn't make Israel the priests because they were hanging on to their tradition, so he... He made the Levites the priests, but that's not his original plan. His plan is to have a people that l- rule the earth, and everyone does the Torah. That's and actually, that's the new heavens, new heavens, new earth. The Torah is the constitution of that kingdom, the new heavens, new earth. Okay. Originally, all the firstborn acts were to guard the Torah. Okay, that's at the bottom of page three. Go to page four. Numbers three fifteen. Yahweh told Moses to count number of the Levites differently. I said they did the Torah. So if this is uh, so if they did, if they did the Torah in the past and in a revelation, there are hundred forty four thousand that believe in guard the Torah, that would be similar to uh, being saved or caught up. Believe and believe, we believe that Jesus will rescue us. That's 1 Corinthians 1.10. And I've got a couple slides in a minute that's going to explain it a little better. But I say the odds of being raptured, if it's only 144,000, it's 0.00002%. So, so we we just got to pray that we're worthy. It's like all week that's been going through in my mind, Lord, I'm not worthy. That's what I think. I'm not worthy. I I mess up. I do this. I do that. I'm trying to be worthy. I am sincerely trying to be worthy, but I'm still a human being. I still mess up. And um, but I do pray that I'm worthy. You know. If there's a crossing over, I want to be in that group, and I know you do too. Um, so, verse 40, Leviticus 3, verse 40. Count every firstborn male of the children of Israel under age 20. This is the second generation that crosses over. They must be redeemed. Verse 49 to 51. The definition of the word redeem. Hebrews 6302, those who are redeemed or redeemed ones, this is the pattern for the thousand-year age, new heavens, new earth, redeemed by Yeshua. We say we follow Yeshua, we obey, we love him, we love him, so we obey his commandments, so we do what he said. That's how we are redeemed. If you say, I follow Jesus, but don't do what he says, you're not, maybe you're not redeemed, Okay. The half Torah, the sons of Israel, and I say redeemed and restored. This is Israel and Judah shall be as the sands of the sea. So it's going to happen. It's a promise. It's going to happen. Hosea 2, is telling, he's, uh, Yahweh tells Hosea, take a wife, a prostitute. And why does he tell him to do that? Because... Israel, God's people, have prostituted themselves and have turned against God. Uh, Israel, the southern kingdom, became a prostitute. The northern kingdom became a prostitute. And uh, so that's why Yeshua had to die so they could be forgiven, so they could remarry Yeshua and be saved. So, verse 14 to 17, Yahweh says, that he will bring these people into the wilderness. And I say that's only if you're not doing what he says. 
he'll take you into the wilderness. Because normally it's from Sinai to uh, Jordan where they cross it, uh, Jericho, is about a three-day journey. That's not spending 40 years in the wilderness and having to put up with snakes and all that stuff they had to put up with, okay? Then Hosea 2, people say, well, Larry, why do you do what you do? And I say, Hosea 2, 18 says, you shall worship me out of love. So that's what we do. We worship Yahweh, Yeshua, out of love. We obey out of love, okay? Not out of fear. And I say, what is the highest form of love? And I think Yeshua uh, gives us the answer when he says, if you love me, do the commandments. Do my commandments. So obedience is a definition of the highest form of love. Verse 22. Yahweh shall betroth a future Israel because Israel believes the promises made by the prophets and their love for Yeshua Causes them to want to obey. Okay, that's how that's how they're uh, betrothed in the future. We'll go to the Brit Hadashah. First Corinthians twelve twenty two. The weaker members of the body of Israel are needed by the body. You know, I looked at everyone that came in my dental office that they had strengths that I did not have. I always felt like I could learn something from anybody. Some people may be a master in knowing how to weld metals together. Somebody might be a master in knowing how to take a paintbrush and draw a picture. Some people might be a master in knowing how to sing a song. I always felt like I could learn from anybody. I always gave my patients the benefit of the doubt. And... Uh, And I think that's how we're to look at people. Don't put yourself above someone else. It says in 1 Corinthians 12, 22, the weaker members of the body of Israel are needed by the body. This church needs everyone that comes in that door. If they show us the fruit that they want to, that they love the Torah and want to do the Torah, this church needs them, right? Because they have strengths that we don't have. Just like uh, there's a lady here last week prayed for Lana. Such a beautiful prayer. It was just a, such an anointed, beautiful prayer because the Lord had put in her spirit how to pray for this particular issue. So the Lord works in each of us differently. That's why we need each other, okay? We need each other. So anyway, I say, are you, are you wheat or are you tire, tares? Matthew 24, 22, 14. Many are called, but few are chosen. So when we show the picture of the narrow way and the broad way, the broad way, all of God's people are called, but few are chosen. And that's because they make up their own rules. <laughs> the tear looks identical to the wheat. The tear is so identical to the wheat that the tares believes it is wheat. Did you hear that? The tares believe they are wheat. Okay. Botanists refer to the tares as darnel. It grows and looks identical to the wheat. It is said that the only thing that can be done with darnell seed is to give it to the chickens to eat. Matthew 24, or burned in the fire. The seeds of darnell are poisonous due to a fungus that grows on that darnell seed. And that's the Eastern Bible Dictionary trans, uh, definition. Many biblical scholars say that this parable in Matthew 13 is about the tares who follow a Torah-less Jesus. They say anything goes in the kingdom. You, you can serve the Lord. Now everybody's going to go. Everybody, God loves everybody. Everybody's going to heaven. 
That's just not biblical. All the wicked who sin by not obeying Torah are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned in the soon tribulation. And there, be careful. Hopefully you have an old Bible that's correct. They're changing the Bibles so that they're taking a lot of stuff out of the more modern Bibles so that our youth will be misled by the adversary. So make hang your Bible is very important. If you got some old Bibles at home, hang on to them. Yeshua says in Matthew 13, the good seed, the wheat seed, are the children of the kingdom age and then the new heavens, new earth. The wicked are burned in fire. That's Matthew 40. And I, this is the nitty-gritty that I get from this Torah portion. on bottom page 7. One is sitting if one does not set the seventh-day Sabbath apart by not working, having someone work for you, etc., etc. One is sinning if one does not set the seven annual feast days apart by not working, doing your own thing, spending money. One is sinning if one does not keep the sabbatical year. And we don't understand the sabbatical year because we don't live in the land. So it's a little complicated over here. But we just do it the best we can. And I make it simple. Uh, I just don't plant seed in the sabbatical year. If it pops up by itself, I eat it. Like I had some squash pop up last year everywhere, and I ate it. And I say one is sinning if, was, if one didn't, does not obey the fruit of the Spirit. What is the fruit of the Spirit? When the Spirit of God is active in your life, the Holy Spirit, and you receive the baptism, then you walk in those seven fruits of the Spirit, and you're not critical of your brother just because he thinks a little different from you. You're not critical. You don't speak bad about it. You don't speak Lashon Hara. Page 8. I'm saying a separation has already begun. Malachi says, a book of remembrance. So we're talking about in this first Exodus, God tells Moses, go number the people, counting 603,000 men. They're held to a higher standard. They're held... They're supposed to do what God says, they don't, they die. But here in Malachi, he says in the, the book of remembrance, or his jewels, were being numbered here in Malachi. Y'all will make the, an obvious difference between the righteous and the wicked. The biblical definition here for wicked, we, people don't have a proper fear of God. God is so holy He's so holy and so perfect. So when he says wicked, that's anything that doesn't agree 100% with him. If you really love your father and have fear of your father, you realize that anything that comes against him in any way is wicked. Not what we think wicked is. We think wicked is uh, being a bad guy, shooting people, and all this stuff. Wicked. No, it's anything we do against the Holy God. The biblical definition here for wicked simply means the ones who do not serve Yahweh correctly by obeying the words of Torah exactly because Nadab and Abihu died. So the past month or so, we've been giving rules, his rules, so we don't die in the wilderness like they did in the first exodus, okay? So my question is, are you wheat? Are you tares? I know everybody here is wheat. Praise the Lord. So we'll close up. I might have a slide or two. Let's see. We're to be priests in this com- soon coming kingdom. Lots of verses that say that in Peter and in Revelation. What is counting the Omer? It's making a daily oath to obey Torah like Yeshua. Be a, so we can be a first fruits offering, a first fruits offering at Pentecost. It's a forever commandment. So we're counting 50 days, making a daily oath. 
to do Torah like Yeshua. So we move the barley sheath over for day 42. So how many more days we got? Eight. Eight more days to Pentecost. And uh, so we'll, next Sabbath, we'll, they'll, all of these will be over here and there'll be one left. So on Sunday is the Sabbath, right? Following High Holy Day, Pentecost. <laughs> 